Well, praise the Lord, and uh, thank you for joining another edition of Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Pastor Nate Brozier, and I'm just excited and thankful that you have taken time out of your busy schedule uh, just to take a few minutes and listen. Uh, I promise I won't be long, and I'm going to try to be better about going into season four of being deliberate about just being, I just want to grace, I just want to speak into your life for 15, 20 minutes. And so I'm not going to waste time uh, just kind of talking. I'm just going to go in and address. But without further ado, just go ahead and if you will, share this to your social media network. Um, there's many options to watch this or actually to watch this. You can, you can go to YouTube, Pastor Nate 2011. You can find me there. Uh, you also, you, you can look on um, many different bod- broadcasts of podcasts, such as Spotify, Apple Podcast. I mean, you name them. Anybody that carries podcast, you can also listen to this. But without further ado, let's get started. Today, I want to simply talk to you on the lines of uprooting negativity. Listen to what I'm saying. Uprooting negativity. And so many, so many times in our life, we, we have so much negativity around us. We deal with certain things of pressure, whether it's self-induced, uh, whether it's brought on us by coworkers, employers, uh, or employees of ours. Um, there's a lot of negativity, and, and whether you're even in the church world, people want to critique and judge and say, well, I wish we would do it this way. Well, back in my day, we used to do it like that. And we would say some things like that, and, and ultimately, it, we were dealing with negativity. And so, there's not a day that doesn't go by uh, that where we won't have to deal with some sort of negativity, whether it be from your children, your wife, your spouse, your husband, you're going to deal with some kind of negativity. And so, I want to just talk to you. Give me 15 minutes of your time today. I want to talk to you about uprooting this very thing that's in our life. If you turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, it reads in verse 5. We're going to go those first five verses. Uh, In Jeremiah, chapter 1, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. So if you're kind of following along, uh, you'll understand where I am reading at. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5 and through 10, it goes this way. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. My God, that's strong right there. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to, here's the key of this message. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Let me read verse 10 one more time because after he had spoken to the prophet Joshua or the prophet Jeremiah, he said, here's what I need you to do because he put his hand upon his mouth and said, let me put my words in your mouth. And he appointed him from that day, Jeremiah the prophet, stand up against nations and kingdoms and uproot, tear down, destroy and overthrow, but others you must build up and plant. Now I want to point out some things real quick to you in this little time that I want to speak into your life. That Jeremiah received six prophetic declarations that would define his ministry. God kind of spoke this to me a few years ago and I relayed it on a Facebook message one time and and I believe I preached a message even on this, this entitlement about uprooting uh, some things in, in your life, um, uprooting sin. I think I kind of went that route with it. But Jeremiah received six prophetic declarations that would define his ministry. 
four of which are negative and two that are positive. Now you think about that. He, he spoke over him. He says, here's what I need you to do, Jeremiah. Prophet, I am appointing you. I am calling you to be a prophet. And we see Jeremiah try to you know, backpedal and say, no, 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 I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm not that person. And, and so just like many of us, God has given us, God has given us thoughts. He's given us plans. He's given us procedures to do things. And we begin to disqualify ourselves uh, because we say that we're unqualified or we'll say that we're not capable of doing these things that God, you have in store for me. And so we begin to minimize the capabilities. We begin to minimize the possibilities that our God can do and use through us. And so we, we make excuses why we can't go somewhere. We make excuses why we can't do something. But God is telling us, actually he's telling Jeremiah in this particular passage, here's what I'm calling you to do. You say you can't do this, but I shall put my hand upon your mouth and you will speak my word. Listen, this is not about you and I. This is not about our gifts. This is not about our talents. This is about how God can use us to his fullest capacity. God can use us to the extent that we may not be able to ever see ourselves be used, but God can use the ignorance to confound the wise. And so you may feel like you're uneducated, unqualified, uh, don't maybe lack a lot in certain areas. Uh, maybe you're even like Moses. Moses told God himself, listen, I, I can't speak well and uh, you're going to have me go. Some would say that he had a stuttering issue. Some would say he may have had a speech impediment. But nonetheless, what did God tell Moses even then? He said, listen, I'll give you Aaron and Aaron will speak on your behalf. Now, we, as we know through the scriptures, Aaron never had to speak a word. Why? Because God called Moses to do the very thing that he was calling him to do. God won't call us into something that he knows that we're not capable of producing through. It's not us that does the producing anyway. It's him just looking for a vessel. Mm. I'm telling you, man, let this sink into yourself. You speak negativity over yourself more often than we even should. You know, I'm guilty myself. I begin to minimize the very things that I know God has called me to do because I begin to look at myself. I self-evaluate and say, I am not equipped. I am not capable. But if God calls me to pastor a church of a thousand people, hey, I know I'm not able, but I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You know, I may not be looking at myself in this proverbial mirror and saying to myself that I am not uh, uh, wealthy enough to do certain things, but if God be for me, be before me, then who can be against me? So if he tells me to take on that mountain, then I have to walk by faith and not allow my negativity to decide what I'm going to do or not going to do. I need to speak with faith. What did Christ say? He said, speak into the mountain and the mountain shall be moved. Now listen, we can't just go talk to the giant. Uh, we can't go to Mount Fuji and say, Mount Fuji, be moved and cast into the sea. We're talking proverbial, I can't even talk myself. We're talking proverbial here. Now, there's obstacles that are in our lives that we say these mountains are too big that we can't overcome. Listen, I'm talking to you, person of faith, speak into that mountain and tell it to move. Now, what did he tell Jeremiah? He told him four, four things he's got to do that's negative or, or that's going to be challenging. Let me say it that way. Number one, he said, I need you to root out or uproot. I need you to root out the very things. Why would he speak to him about something of rooting out in some cases? Now, let me talk to you and teach to you from this level. This level. If he tells you to root out something, we all have dealt with those pesky those weeds that we deal with in our gardens, our flower beds, that if you don't address the root, that sucker will constantly show itself up almost every time you go to mow or weed eat. It's inevitable because all we're doing is we're addressing the surface. 
and you're not addressing the very root cause. So many of us, we have to address the root of our issues. We have to address the root of the problem. And so we've got to go dig deep and uproot or root out the very thing that is causing us to stumble. Sometimes that's a sin that we have to deal with. Maybe it's lust, maybe it's pride, maybe it's greed. Maybe it's you fill in the blank, whatever your root is. May have been passed down from generation to generation. Dad was an alcoholic, mother was an alcoholic, grandpa and grandma was alcoholics, and now you're struggling with this same addiction behavior. Listen, we've gotta uproot that thing. I can't do it on my own, but I have to trust in his word that I must uproot, pull down every stronghold that, is, that rises against, its, against me, the children of God, against you and I. We have to pull down those strongholds. Another form of uprooting, rooting out. Then he tells us to pull down, which is where I was jumping the gun here, to pull down those strongholds. Pull down those things. In order to get to where we need to get to, we have to address the obstacles that are preventing us from reaching our destiny. So we have to root out, uproot. We have to pull down. Number three, we have to destroy. We have to annihilate. We have to just not even make a scene, turn it into dust. When you destroy something, look what the Bible says that Satan tries to do. He tries to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying to destroy you and I. But we have the ability through Christ Jesus and his blood that he shed because we are now victorious through Christ Jesus. We now have the, the ability to destroy the very thing that Satan is trying to attack us with. We have the ability to destroy our past. Not anything I can do, but what Christ had already done. And I have to believe by faith that through his blood and his righteousness, I am now covered. I am now set free from all spiritual wickedness, from all bondage, from all of my yesteryear, from all of my yesterdays. I am now made an overcomer by the word of my testimony and the blood of the lamb. So that backwards, I made it overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Why is that so significant? Is because the blood of the lamb through Jesus Christ, we are now, we are now free from all negativity. We are now free from all bondage. We are now set free from all wickedness, demonic things that the enemy is, has, has, has put upon our lives through the blood of the lamb. And we now have to testify and declare the word of the Lord. And we are an overcomer by the word of our testimony. In the same sense, we must declare what the word of God says. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I am the head, not the tail. You gotta speak those things. I believe Romans says to speak those things that are not as though they are. You gotta confuse the enemy. The enemy's like, listen, I know you're this, I know you're that. But you begin to speak faith right there. What happens is you begin to uproot negativity. You begin to speak over poverty. You begin to speak over everything that is somewhat true in your life, but you gotta speak those things that are not as though they are. Come on, let faith rise in this, in this segment right here. It's time for us to uproot all negativity. So what does he tell Jeremiah? Root out, uproot, pull down, destroy, and throw down. Now, I like a play on words here. When it's time to throw down, that means it's time to go to war. That's, that's our westernized, civilized, or westernized American, uh, verbiage that we say, we're about to go throw down. When we was in high school, we would say, oh, did you hear so-and-so is about to throw down? It just meant we're about to go to fight. Now I'm gonna use this in this, this terminology today. Listen, he, God is telling Jeremiah, it's time to uproot, pull down, destroy, and go, go take this thing by force. Go throw down, throw it down, take it down. 
but I'm going to use it from this mindset here. It's time for us to go to battle. It's time for us to, to fight some things, some fight, some negativity that's been around our life. It's time to not stop until, in, until we're, until it's over, as we would say, destroyed until there's no sign uh, of life, so to speak. That's when you're really, truly throwing down and that kind of throwing down will send you to prison. But listen, we're talking about spiritual warfare. We're talking about battling the enemy tooth and nail. We're talking about going to battle against the enemy that is always trying to destroy and devour. The Bible says he comes seeking whom he may devour like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking to destroy me and you. So let's go to battle against the enemy and take back what the enemy's stolen from you. Man, I'm telling you, I'm feeling faith arise in this room. I know I'm upstairs in the upper room at destiny, but I'm feeling it. It's time for us to uproot, pull down, destroy, and throw down. Listen, when you get to that place, because the enemy wants to shut down the genesis of something. And here's where I want to talk about this. The enemy always wants to shut down the genesis of something that is going to happen mightily and great. Look what he even did to Jesus. He tried to get Jesus to not do what he was about to do. And he began to tempt him with what? He tempted him with food. Why would he tempt him with food? Because he was fasting for 40 days with no food nor water. And he tempted him with food. Turn that stone into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We understand that the enemy will try to destroy the thing at the beginning stage. You will deal with warfare in the beginning stages of what your destiny is supposed to be. So you've got to throw down, you've got to destroy, you've got to uproot, and you've got to pull down first. He told him to cast himself off this mountain. And he said, you'll have angels come. Now at that time he would say, and then even went on and said, look at everything the eye can see. I'll give it to you if you just bow down and worship me. Listen, he understood his assignment. Jesus understood his assignment that if he takes this drink, if he drinks from this cup, that he, if he, if he lasts and goes and, and dies upon this cross and is resurrected, that he would have to suffer, that he knew that all you and I now, through what his shedding of his blood, through his destruction that the, that, the, that the enemy was thinking he was throwing at him, he knew that if he would do this, then we would all have, we would all have eternal life through Jesus Christ, through his blood. He knew the end results, but the Satan was trying to tempt him with all the land. You can have it all. Listen now, the enemy is going to try to, to stop you before you get launched. The enemy is going to try to stop you before you reach your breakthrough. The enemy is going to try to stop you before you reach your destiny. So then there, here's the thing. The first four things he tells Jeremiah is to root out, pull down, destroy, and throw down first. First four things. He didn't say, I shall prosper you. Everything you touch, I'm going to bless. I know we have some, we have some uh, churches right now, pastors and leaders prophesying, speaking the positivity gospel, that there's no suffering in this. We are, we, are, we are just, listen, we are going to have to throw down. We are going to have to fight. We are going to have to go through spiritual warfare because the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. That is not to make you feel scared. That is not to make you feel timid right now because the Bible says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. I want this to get into your spirit today because the enemy is out to destroy you, but rest assured that God has already made provision for you and I. We just got to walk it out. We just got to walk by faith and not by sight. We got to trust in, as my dad would sing back in the old day, we have to trust in that unseen hand that guides me through this old weary land. Listen, I'm talking to you right now. Negativity is all around you. The enemy is trying to get you to give up, throw in the towel, let somebody else do it. But I'm here to speak faith 
to you today. It's time for us to uproot negativity. It's time for us to throw down negativity. It's time for us to pull down the negativity that is going in our mind. And it's time for us to destroy the very negativity that is in your mind. Why? Because then this is what he tells Jeremiah. Then I want you to build and then plant. Once you tear down the very, the very foundation of negativity, once you tear down the very foundation of what the enemy has told you that you're capable of doing or you're not capable of doing, the lies that he has spewed over your life, then it's time for us to rebuild, restore, and plant. My God, it's not time for us to throw in the towel once we feel like destruction's all around us. Then it's time for us to build. Build when people tell you, now's not the time. The interest rates on, on home loans or mortgages or loans in general are too high. Now is not the time to build. But au contrary, now is the time to build. It's time for you to get your plow to the ground. It's time for you to begin to dig trenches once again. It's time for us to plant seeds of faith, plant seeds of, of, of through the word of God to plant into the souls and the mind and the hearts of everyone listening. Listen, now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time to throw in the towel, but now is the time to fight. Now is the time to throw down. And then now is even the time to build and even to plant. Look what he tells. This reveals the priority God speaks to Jeremiah. This reveals the priority as well as the difficulty of removing, destroying the negative before the positive can be done. Listen, we've got to be able to remove the negative before we can receive the positive. Listen, if you look at yourself all the time and all you see is failure, how can you receive what God has in store for you because you can't see yourself in the eyes of God. So you'll always sell God short. Listen, we've got to tear down that stronghold. We've got to pull down every stronghold, every lie that the enemy has convinced you of. We've got to destroy it. We've got to uproot it. Listen, and we've got to begin to build, excuse me, We've got to begin to build the very foundation that Christ wants me and you to build upon. What is that foundation, you may say? It's the Word of God. It's faith in Christ Jesus. All other things are sinking sand. Listen, like what's the old psalms or the old song say, the old hymn? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Listen, get that in your spirit today. It's time for you to find yourself upon the foundation of the word of God and through the blood of Jesus. That is where we shall prosper. That is where we shall flourish. That is where we shall reap my God, that's where we should plant the very things that we're trying to see God use us in. My hope's not built upon my ability. <laughs> my hope's not built upon my, my, my brains, my, my brawn, my looks. God forbid I wouldn't get far with that. But my hope is built strictly upon Jesus Christ. So listen to that. Get that in your head today. If you uproot negativity and you begin to destroy the very thing that the enemy is trying to convince you that you can't do and pull down all those things, then we can declare what the Word of God says, that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ, simply meaning the anointed one. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, the anointed one of God who gives me strength. My strength doesn't come from my own knowledge, my own ability, but my strength comes from Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. He shall be the one that gets the glorified or shall be glorified in whatever Bridgeway does, whatever, whatever destiny does, whatever any ministry that's a part of this comes out of. Listen, it's not about me. 
It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. Let, let's never get it twisted. This is not about you and I, but this is about what Jesus Christ did 2,000 plus years ago. Now we can stand firm upon that foundation, knowing that Christ has already won the battle. My God, this is a fixed fight. This is a fixed fight. Get that in your spirit that you've already won. The battle's fixed. You've already won. All you got to do is stand in the midst of your turmoil. You got to walk upright. You got to declare what the word of the Lord says about me and my house. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I'm telling you, I got to speak that because I'm speaking this over Isaiah. I'm speaking this over Trinity. I'm speaking this over Jessica. I'm speaking this over Allie. I'm speaking this over my grandchildren that are soon to come. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And no weapon that shall be formed against us shall prosper. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So I got to declare that. I got to stand on that foundation. And as he's revealing this to Jeremiah, listen, in other words, God, let me get my glasses back on. God focused twice as much on dismantling the negativity as on bringing the positive. Listen, he, he, he talked about or he addressed or focused twice as much, four out of six things. He talked about dismantling the negative before he began to talk about the positive, the building, the planting, because that's the beauty. Listen, you're in a season where the enemy has tried to steal your, your seed. The enemy has tried to steal your joy, your peace, your hope. But listen, I'm here to speak faith over you right now. I'm closing right now. I'm here to speak faith over you. It's time for you to let go and begin to uproot the negativity in your life. You can do great things, great and mighty things, if you only believe that Christ can, is, the, is victorious in your life. Listen, we can't do anything on our own. I just said that. But our hope and our faith is built truly and wholly upon Jesus Christ. So I want to pray for you right now because I believe there's so many people that are listening to me right now that you can't get over the negativity in your life. Let me help somebody out right now. Father left mother. There's negativity there. Why, God, would you allow my family to be broken like this. Maybe you have went through a divorce yourself. Maybe you're fighting custody battles even for your own kid right now. Listen, your negativity doesn't define you. Listen, your past doesn't define you either. You know what our past does? It shows us what God can bring us from or bring us out of. You know, look what he, look what he did through, throughout the Bible. He had took he had taken some messed up situations and turned it around for the good. And I'm going to speak this word of faith over you right now. Let God turn around your negativity. Let God turn your negative into a positive. But listen, you've got some things to do. You got to go to battle. It's time for you to throw down even right now. So let's, let me pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that wayward Christian man right now or woman that is struggling in their own mind and in their own spirit, God, that they can't get past yesteryears. They can't get past yesterday. But I'm speaking right now some faith that they will begin to uproot the very negativity that is in their life. Begin to throw down begin to destroy and begin to overcome the fears that the enemy has thrown out our way. God, let me speak your word one more time. You said you've not given us the spirit of fear, but what you have given us is power, love, and a sound mind. So I speak this right now. I speak power, love, and a sound mind over your people that are listening to this pod broad, podcast right now. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, hey, I thank you for joining Bridging the Gap once again. Hey, and until next time, I'll see you again. God bless you.